I'd like to call to order the April 6, 2009 meeting of the East Ascension Dra Gravity Drainage District Number 1. Madam Secretary, uh, roll call. Uh, let it be known that Member uh, Dempsey Lambert and Adrian Thompson are not here right now. They may be on their way, but uh, everyone else is present. Would you please stand while Chris Lohr leaves us in invocation. And we'll remain standing. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with us tonight as we try to make the best decisions possible to help the most people in the, uh, possible in this parish. We also ask you to help us to remember this week during Holy Week to reflect on the life and death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are possible. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair would uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the March 2000 so moved. Second. Uh, meeting. We have a motion by one more time. Councilman Dennis oh. Collins, second by Councilman Benny Johnson. Any opposition? Motion passes. <laughs> uh, on the chairman's report, I just want to let everybody know that. Uh, the only real thing I have tonight is uh, last Wednesday I was invited to a meeting at the Iberville Parish in uh, Parish President Mitchell Orso's office along with uh, Parish President Martinez, Mr. Rue, and our legal counsel to meet with his administration uh, and they have a request that they're going to push forward to a resolution of their council that'll be coming to Ascension Parish to have the, the locks at Spanish Lake on Alligator Bayou remain open unless in need of closing for a fear of flooding from backwater. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't a lot of other discussion in there other than that. And, uh, board members, I've given you a copy of the, the letter, the request that was sent for the meeting to uh, Parish President Martinez. Does anybody uh, anybody want to comment on that? No, I mean, that's just where it stands right now. Chairman, did you, did you send that letter to us yet? I, you showed it to me earlier, but I... I, I think I gave you a copy. Okay. Hey. Somebody may have picked you. Uh, Thank you. There you go. Other than that, it's, yes, sir, Mr. Shakes, not. Bill, do we have, uh, what is the schedule? I know you talked about uh, clearing the canal, uh, dra uh, dredging the canal, digging the canal. Alligator Bayou and yeah, Bayou. Alligator Bayou, right now, we, at one time, we tried to put that into the major project, uh, comprehensive project with the Lake Pontchartrain Levy District and Shell Group. Uh, we, in uh, meeting with both entities over the last few months, uh, we have decided it's best to pull it from that major project and then attempt to uh, a cooperative endeavor agreement with Lake Pontchartrain uh, Levy District uh, to participate in the, in the dredging of that channel, of uh, both channels, mm -hmm. independently of the major project. So right now we're pursuing that. I, any time frame, do you know? No, we don't. Again, Against we them. just started the, the process of talking, and Chairman uh, Cluart is involved with it, okay. talking with uh, Lake Pontchartrain on trying to get some help on that. Yeah, we can do that as soon as possible. That way. Yeah, I think that would relieve what we got on our side of the, the parish line. Yes, sir, Ms. Tommy. Uh, I also put some minutes from other drainage board meetings that go back. 1993, 1994, what different levels were discussed. Uh, we also have letters from 1984 where Mr. T.J. Gotro asked uh, a state biologist to, to go in and do a study. Uh, I didn't put a copy of that, but I, I will get you a copy of that uh, letter also. You know, it, it's, a, it's a 
tough call there, but I mean, I've not found any scientific data or talked to anybody that says that the, the, the level needs to be inflated. Uh, you know, most people will tell you, and I, I think the Shaw study that's being done now will come back and, and tell you the same thing. Uh, this is something that's been talked about for years and years. Uh, I don't know exactly what when this when this report is due. I think uh, late summer this year or next year, Jay. Okay. So at that time, we we, we should get some answers. Uh, not only from uh, uh, hydraulic experts, but hopefully from some environmentalists to, to give us a, a, a clear and precise action which, which needs to be done there. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, we, we'll just have to wait. But we, as you all know, the, those locks are not in Ascension Parish. They are in Iberville Parish. Uh, by law, they have control over the locks. Uh, there's been agreements over the years between Ascension Gravity Dr District and Iberville Parish. Uh, but when we got this letter, I mean, basically it said that uh, they requested that we open the locks. So uh, we held back on doing so because of the water level. But uh, Bill, I think that locks were open today. Is that correct? They were opened uh, at about 6.30 yesterday morning, and we checked on them yesterday, and again, I checked on them today, and everything's flowing good. Now, over a regular time, without any more rain, uh, how long would it take to actually, for the water levels to, to reach? Well, it's, it's going to take quite a while for two reasons. Number one is uh, it, it normally takes a, a couple of weeks, you know, for or a few feet to go down, but the other thing is that uh, Bay Manchac is actually still high. Bay Manchac is still <coughs> at elevation of around six or six and a half. Uh, Bay Manchac, I mean, uh, Alligator Bayou was actually around over seven. So, uh, you know, even though it gets down to equalizing with Bay Manchac, there's still going to be a significant level in Alligator Bayou for quite a while, we estimate. So it's nothing to say that, and we don't really know, you know, what is the final uh, elevation or sustained elevation of, of uh, Bayou Manchac. It gets more rain in, that, in the Amet River Basin. Conceivably, Bayou Manchac can stay at a, a five, six elevation for a long time, which means the Alligator Bayou stays at the same elevation. So we just it's just a wait and see and see what the weather's like. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, the, the Alligator Bayou issue is certainly is a, uh, is a uh, an emotional is issue. Uh, it happens to be in, in District 8, which is which is my my district. Yes, um, sir. Let, let it be known that I, that I was not invited to the meeting, and that for rightful reasons. Uh, Parish President is in charge of the drainage district, and this is a drainage issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, therefore, um, um, whatever was discussed at the meeting, of course, I am not privy to it. Situation. Uh, I am a little. Um, Taken back that 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 we could not come to some type of agreement with uh, Parish President Mitchell Lewis or at Iberville Parish to to get all the facts and all the players uh, since uh, since I've been on this uh, drainage board and council uh, I haven't had any communication with anyone from Iberville Parish except Mr. Nesbitt who came to us uh, and spoke at this drainage board several mm -hmm. times before yes. uh, doing the study. Um, I understand um, um, landowners have threatened to sue us, uh, and we do have an agreement, I think the latest one as of 2002, uh, the one that I think the parish president sent us, of Mr. Roof sent us. Um, but we did lower the level uh, from 5'5 five five to 5 foot. In fact, we lowered a little bit more than that because the level indicator at Alligator Bay was actually wrong. Uh, and at the time, Mr. Bonifay, who operates a business at that, at that establishment, at the, or at the, at the locks, um, was very concerned about the situation. And one of the reasons that Mr. Rue and, and the drainage aspect of it, we, were, we talked about it, is so that we could get uh, alligator bayou dredged and bro bayou and what have you uh, because of the immense silting that has taken place, mm -hmm. most of it from Iberville Parish. Um, and, and, and that we could uh, get it dredged uh, so that it could contain more, uh, uh, more of the water and therefore possibly lower the level even more. Uh -huh. uh, and I applaud Mr. Roof for his, his uh, uh, efforts on that. Um, uh, it is a business in, in Ascension Parish that we should be concerned of, uh, Alligator Bayou. 
uh, and uh, they are residents. Uh, and the reason I think, uh, I, I could be wrong, but the reason that we control the locks is because we have the most uh, uh, liability involved because we have a ridge road that has several houses. Uh, a lot of our residents live on that, uh, on that road. In fact, uh, um, for years, uh, one of the residences, uh, residents that lived on the road actually worked for the parish and controlled uh, the locks uh, and did it 100% uh, uh, of the time and did it uh, to, to the uh, betterment of the whole community. Um, but this is a, a delicate issue. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there has been threats from both sides. Uh, but uh, I, I, I am going to reserve some, some more uh, comments on it until I know the whole story because I don't know it all. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Martin, as was privy to that, Mr. Cluot, you was privy to some of that information, and I don't know all I need to know, so uh, we'll, we'll save any more comments to a later date. Yeah, and I tell you, <clears throat> I think when I talk to you Thursday evening, that's what I'd, what I'd like to see is I know that the Alligator Bayou and the Bro Bayou were on, on a project status, and basically, you know, what we could do to move forward with that and just make it the best for both sides. That way we have uh, we have some flooding risk in in the Spanish Lake on Ridge Road up in there. So we're gonna try to, you know, take care of the residents. But uh, I've also I've already asked Mr. Rue to get uh take a close look at that and see what, what we're talking about. Four dollars and cents yeah. on uh taking care of trying to trying to get that dredged out. And, and, and of course, our responsibility is to drainage. Flood. And I think everybody yeah. understands that, mm -hmm. is to drainage. Yeah. And that's where we have to stay. And, and, that's, and that's one of the things that I know, I know that in the meeting with Mr. Urso that we just tried to keep it in hand of this the flood control structure. That's correct. Are we talking about flooding? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Anyway, that's all I have. Uh, one more, well, uh, Mr. Roof, you want to move right into your drainage reports? Yes, sir. Uh, well, before I do, you know, I forgot to tell you, uh, Chairman, uh, President Morton has, has put, uh, if, if people are watching this week, uh, Public Works is, is on a four-day, eight-hour day, eight -hour day uh, work schedule, 7 to 3.30. So uh, we'd like to get that out as much as possible. We're going to leave a message on the phone that that's our working time for this week because of holiday Friday. And I just want to make that announcement um, if anybody's watching. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, for us, the reports, uh, drainage department. American Industrial removal of covers, clearing the property today. Should have to uh, begin uh, removing the cover and have an open ditch at that location later this week. Oak Grove Community Center ditch uh, piping, 75% complete. Uh, lateral from LA 931 across Norwood Road is, uh, is a pretty major project that we can be cleaning this, uh, this lateral going to. Um, uh, Henderson Bayou and beginning that this week. Southwood uh, subdivision modifications to the gate and connecting ditch. If you remember, you know, we added uh, a berm to the back of Southwood Village off LA 30 and we added uh, fl somewhat uh, uh, fl uh, floodgates in that area so we can stop the backwater flooding from Ball Bayou and, and Conway uh, from getting into that subdivision. We had some problems with leakage and we're repairing that now so. Uh, we can reduce the amount of flow coming through there. Material uh, or, or is on order for the uh, detention pond in Manjack Harbor. That's part of the, the, the uh, bank stabilization project. And that material is on order. As soon as it comes in, we're going to be uh, pumping down that pond and, and applying the liner to it. And the bids for the stabilization is being advertised. So as soon as the advertisement comes in, we could be coming to the uh, commission results of the, the bid process. Drainage pipe for Charleston subdivision drainage video. Uh, the video for that drainage pipe is uh, completed, and uh, um, the director of public works and myself are reviewing the uh, results of that, um, of that video to determine what kind of uh, reconstruction project is needed to, to bring that, uh, that drainage uh, uh, project in, in order in line. Monticello, uh, Monticello subdivision drainage project is lacking just one landowner from agreeing to uh, dig the ditch and we have a meeting, a right way agent actually has a meeting tonight and uh, so hopefully we can get uh, some resolution to that so we can dig that ditch and provide drainage to a, a flooding situation that have been in here at least the last nine to ten years since I've been here on the end of Monticello. Fisherman's Wharf bulkhead uh, repair is complete. 
sheet piles of uh, has we check the sheet piles at that location and they do they are verified uh, to be as designed so that was one of the uh, concerns of some commissioners but uh, they what is there is what was designed to be there and uh, the uh, reconstruction of those uh, uh, wharfs is complete the pipe for the railroad crossings at Silverstone and LA, LA 30 has been received we have them in our yard but we're still waiting on railroad contractor to respond to requests to start the work. Uh, we sent them several requests by email and by phone, and we haven't had a response from them. So we still trying to get in touch with them. They've been putting us off for over a year now, and we're trying to get a resolution to that project. Off uh, ditch uh, weed control. That's mowing your ditches and cleaning ditches. Uh, it just started the first rotation. We did 8.1 miles of cutting and 17 miles of spray in, in March. Major channel improvements. Now, right now, we're clearing the Law Ridge Levee as part of that project, the um, upgrade of the Law Ridge, existing Law Ridge Levee. And we're still in the acquisition of servitude across, the, um, across that levee. But we are proceeding with the cleaning. We're about 75% uh, complete with the grubbing and clearing of the, both sides of the, um, of the existing levee. Bird Island Ditch, we're going to begin uh, clearing and grubbing for that project Monday. Uh, we still got a couple of legal issues, but uh, we're going to go ahead and start the process while we're trying to resolve the legal issues. Shadow Creek uh, Ditch, the same thing. Uh, we're starting to survey in and right away acquisition right now. Well, while we uh, at that location for us, the Bird Island Ditch, when we complete Bird Island Ditch, we want to jump straight across to the Shadow Creek, complete both of those projects so the road department can proceed with the upgrade of the, of the uh, crossings on Roddy Road, both crossings, both at Shadow Creek and um, Bird Island. And I, uh, we're anticipating being able to have most of our projects completed by the time uh, construction of the actual crossings begin. And at least that's our intention. A storm event, nor uh, March 27. Uh, pumps were started at, um, on March 26, approximately 2 p.m. We pumped down to a minus 0.05, waiting for the storm uh, event. And lock stayed closed until March 20, well, for, from March 26th to April 4th. We had to keep the locks closed because we had the unusual high elevations of uh, Amit River Basin due to the rain event and, and other uh, tide events and also the wind uh, direction. So we weren't able to open the locks up until April 4th. And we, during several times during that time span, we had to pump just to keep bringing the elevation down in, the, uh, in our basin. Give you an indication of, of how our pumping operation went. Again, we started at 2 o'clock. All five pumps, well, at 2 p.m. on the, uh, the night of the event, we had all five pumps running, elevation 2, 3 on the inside. 3 o'clock, all five pumps running. 4 o'clock, all five pumps running. 5 o'clock, all five pumps running. Uh, we brought it down. After three hours, we were able to bring it down to a 1.16. 6 o'clock, three pumps. Uh, 7 o'clock, back to four pumps. It started rising on us. Uh, 6 o'clock, four pumps. 9 o'clock, four pumps. And then three. 11 o'clock, five pumps. 12 o'clock, five pumps. 1 o'clock, five pumps. And we maintained a point 04, 05, 09, and start rising on us from a 04 up to a 1. A 1.2, and that's for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours of all five five pumps running. It actually gained on us a little bit before we were able to uh, get it back down to a 0.07. So again, this just gives you this is our actual log. So it gives indication of what's happening at the pumping station when we get a major rain event, and in connection with all the work that we're doing up river which is cleaning these channels. And uh, the more we clean, the more we find the water's getting down to us. So again, this is a report that we do during the operations. And it's available for anybody to see. And it's also sent into the Corps of Engineers. But again, it'll tell you, give you a little bit of indication how we have to work these pumps to keep, okay. uh, keep everything down at a low enough elevation where we get a flow down to it from the upper end of the parish. OK. And again, we already mentioned alligator body locks will open at 6.30 a.m. Sunday morning. The, uh, we also, and I talked to the, uh, Mr. Grant 
we're gonna, going to send a long-reach uh, tracker. We sent uh, a grade all over there, over there today, this morning, to try to get some of the lilies and the trash through the locks. We're going to send a long-reach tracker excavator over there in the morning to, uh, to try to um, expedite that process uh, because anybody knows when you get a high level in, in Alligator Bayou and Spanish Lake, all the debris goes to the locks and it's really a, a horrible sight and it's a, it's, it's a drainage issue. We've got to get that stuff through into Manshack and get it on down the river. So we will be mobilizing a tracker over there in the morning to do that. Capital improvement projects, Law Ridge Levy, um, like I said, I mentioned a minute ago, we are mulching and clearing the operation and uh, servitude, uh, continue with the servitude process. Henderson Bay floodgate and pumps. We uh, reevaluate the pump design uh, to, for the hopes of lowering the cost even more than, than the, uh, the value engineering. But we, we're still hopeful that the overall pro uh, schedule can be uh, maintained of completion in the year 2011. It's 2012. Marvin Bro pumping station expansion. And we're also doing a reevaluation of the pump capacity and design in an effort to lower the cost. And we, again, the same thing applies. We're still hopeful that the complete uh, schedule for the uh, project will, um, will be maintained. Uh, the pumping uh, station enclosure, we had a pre construction meeting uh, today. Construction contract is going for, uh, through legal review right now. And it's still estimating about four weeks before construction can actually begin on that project. Muddy Creek flood control uh, project cost analysis of the flood control alternatives are being evaluated by the administration. We're looking at all the alternatives. Uh, we got several issues there with bridges compared to a flood gate, compared to pumps. And we're looking at the cost compared to um, benefits of all those alternatives. And at which time we, when we complete that, we'll have meetings with the council members involved uh, with the, in that district and bring the whole project to the full commission uh, with our report. Okay, let me see. And basically that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman, unless I can answer some questions. I think we, uh, we had a speaker, Mr. Hillenbeck. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, member of the drainage board. Uh, I thought it might be a finance report, and uh, but the, the chairman asked me to put this under uh, agenda item number six. Uh, to the citizens of uh, and the voters of Ascension Parish, please pay close attention to, about, to what I'm about to say. Uh, let's see. And in the room, I need to turn this on where it can. Uh, how do we get this operational? What do you got? You got a slide got, presentation? Yeah, no, I don't have a slide. I got I got about three or four sheets of paper I want to put up with numbers on. Okay. Burning the clock. How do we operate it, Rand? I don't know. There it is. There it is. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I'm Doug Hillensbeck, former council in the District 7 in Prairieville, and I reside at 18061 Cully Broussard Road. Since 1980, I've been an owner, and since 1996, president of uh, Kelly Pest Control. I have a degree in finance from Florida State University, and I've retired from the Army National Guard with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Most of those years I served as an engineer officer. I also served on the school board for nine years. After the council formed the Drainage Commission in 2006, it passed the 40-year East Ascension bond issue of 2007. Bonds were sold in an amount of $65,165,000. Currently, there's approximately $60 million remaining in the issue from the bond issue sale. These dollars are invested in U.S. Treasuries at a current rate of return of 0.26% interest, or one quarter of one point. The interest the parish will receive on this $60 million that's invested this year is $150,000. Interest paid out will be $3,018,525. The interest paid out over the 40-year bond issue will be 121 million, and then the principal paid back 65 million for a total of 186 million. 
Now, no actual work's been done yet, just engineering studies, legal finance, financial advisory fees and interest. The parish financial advisor alone was paid $325,825. President Obama's chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, is currently under fire for earning $320,000 over a period of 14 months as a board of director for Fannie Mae. Yet we paid a financial advisor $325,000, perhaps what was one to two months of work. The issuance cost of the bond issue was over two and a half million dollars. The bonding attorney's fees are not, are, are, excuse me, the bonding attorney's fees are set by the state attorney general, and I'm not at all questioning his fees. The financial advisor put the bond issue together, and I question his and many of, of the other issuance costs. We did uh, bond issues on the school board, my time on the board, along with Mr. Valentine. And uh, from uh, my nine years experience, we never were charged anything like this. Former drainage chairman Todd Lambert, with the help of current members Kent Schneider, George Valentine, and former council members uh, Savoy, Fontenot, and uh, Byruger fought hard to have this bond issue approved. Other council members had concerns, however, had they voted no, they too would have been targeted as, as I was as being against drainage in an, in an election year. I voted no because not being ready to proceed, I had questions about certain projects with the reasons I felt that as valid projects were ready to go, financing should then be obtained incrementally. And again, that's why I voted no. I want the people to know these details, and I also want to know that I feel like I was vilified in the media, especially by the Gonzales Weekly Citizen on this issue, and also on the Drainage Commission issue, issue. Uh, which, uh, uh, thank God, just last month, you people reversed that decision. And uh, before that decision was reversed, uh, the, the estimates are from the Paris office that $2.7 million in additional cost was incurred by uh, that decision. Uh, because of, uh, uh, Mr. Hill is back. Yes. Please wrap it up quickly, okay, sir. I'm just You're on about I'm four on, minutes on now. On the last page. Uh, I also uh, voted no on that issue, and because of that ill-advised issue uh, decision, about three million tax dollars were wasted. Because of question boards that supporting cult, uh, consultants and drainage board members, the weekly citizen reported in their editorial that I turned the drainage meeting into a circus. My response to them Doug. in the newspaper is wrong, and that uh, it wasn't a circus, it was a zoo. In a circus, you at least have trained animals to work with. I feel I'm due an apology from the newspaper. I know that won't happen, so I'll be satisfied with an in-depth look at these issues because the people Wrap it up, Doug. deserve You'll, nothing your time's less than up. the truth. All of this information, by the way, came from the office of uh, Paris Government Finance Office. And uh, I'll be happy to entertain or respond to anyone's comments. Or Thank you, sir. Thank you. We appreciate you speaking. Just, uh, just let everybody know that, uh, however, this bond issue came to us, whether they're seated council members or new council members, what we've joined, we've done is we've joined together. And we joined with the administration, and we're going to try to put the best foot forward for that dollar value for this parish in drainage. And we hope to have some projects going to construction pretty soon, and that's what we're doing right now. We're deliberating on, uh, on the value of each project versus the value at design versus the value at budgeted. Yes, sir, Mr. Shakespeare. Yes, uh, for Mr. Rue. Uh, Bill, you had mentioned that uh, we've been having the culverts on, on going, trying to go on the railroad track at Highway 30. We've been having them a year. Uh, it, you know, President Martinez, can we get some help on getting uh, the, the railroads to allow us to go through there? I mean, we had another rain event. Uh, Sam Spellagene has been working on this for 30 years, trying to get this. and. Uh, and and uh, I, I will be glad to contact the yeah. representative of the railroad. Of course, the railroad is an independent group. Uh, Very I will tell you that they're hard to deal with. They, Pat knows that. We've been working mm -hmm. on the issue on 73 with them. Thought we had it uh, settled, but it, it just didn't quite happen at this point. Mm -hmm. But 
what I may do is, is bring a gentleman that works with the railroads in Baton Rouge uh, and see if he can come down, Mr. Cormac, Cormac Blackman and uh, Cedric and I both know him. Uh, hopefully we can get him down here for a meeting and, and see if we can come up with some solutions to some of these problems. You know, if you can get his phone number, I'd like to get the people to just go ahead and call him directly instead of calling all the people that have been working <laughs> trying to get there. Well, we, 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 we can do that, too. Yeah, but uh, we we'll get him that. over here. I think he'll uh, come for us and okay. talk to us. And, uh, and uh, maybe we can uh, rouse him up a little bit. I appreciate it. Uh, the other thing, uh, we're going to do an enclosure on the, on the pumping station, Bill, which is great. Uh, one of the concerns they had is that, uh, and I visited today over this uh, last thing and first of all I want to compliment the guys uh, very professional it was it was uh, I was very well uh, pleased about what was going on and how they were going about their business so you know we need to transfer that these guys really work very hard and what they're doing very professional uh, one of the concerns was uh, once we it was very noisy out there once we put a cover on all this how is that going to be affected is, is there some something uh, study or, or some condition going out for the noise uh, or are we going to contain the noise inside it's going to be like a bass drum or it, it will be more noise inside the building than outside the building uh, like it'd be more noise because you got an enclosure around it and the all the employees need to wear hearing protection that's just the way it is just like in a chemical plant anywhere else a factory they're going to have to wear hearing protection um, you know when inside the building a uh, good thing about it that when you're on the outside of the of the the major enclosure, which is your your pumping station, yes, uh, the people working on the outside is less noise. Uh, that's the ones uh, working the debris removal and the uh, screens and and things like this. So it's a it's a good side and downside. You're working outside of the main enclosure, it's less noise. Inside be more noise, and the employees just gonna have to wear uh, hearing protection. Yeah, and if you can take a look at if there's some places we can put in there that'll help. They are they are yeah, trying to noise. muffle the the uh, the uh, exhaust systems, but you just can do so much when you have a, a major uh, type engine like this. And again, we just you have appreciate to personal anything. protective equipment to protect the employees. Anything you can do to help reduce the noise, we appreciate. Okay. Yeah, just uh, anybody else. Yes, sir, Todd. Bill, talking about this little storm that we had, I don't know, inch-wise, how many inches of rain that we had. Uh, that but, you know, just to say, if the rain wouldn't have stopped, our five pumps were going full speed. So it is definitely justifiable to go with the additional pump yeah. capacity. We know that for a fact. You know, there was a lot of questions in the last four or five years on, you know, we had enough capacity there. But, you know, we, we are seeing that we don't, you know. so We had so several Mm -hmm. conflicting uh, reports on rain it, it, but uh, at different up parts of the parish it came down um, it, anywhere between two and a half to three and a half four four and a half inches depending on who took it and where it was however the, the one of the reasons that we had particular problems um, at the pumping station was because of two reasons number one is we just uh, completed uh, the, uh, the improvement of, of Bay Francois all the way up through uh, Smith Bayou the second reason is it looks like the, the storm event came directly from west to east across the New River Basin, with New River Francois Basin, and stayed on top of that basin from Iberville Paris all the way through Ascension. We saw, and, and President Martinez and I both went and looked at uh, the, um, some uh, elevations in uh, the upper end of, of New River all the way almost into Iberville Parish, uh, the um, White Road and, and up through there and uh, Lewis White Road, which is the upper ends of the, uh, of the New River, and it had a high elevation but flowing for 12 or 15 hours after the rain event. Mm. It seemed like everything kept coming from Iberville Parish and coming on it. So that was an unusual event in that it started on the upper end of the, this basin and stayed on that all the way to the pumping station, and, and that caused us to keep giving that water real quickly to the pumping station. So it was a little bit of an unusual event. And I think prior to the rains, I think we had some east wind that kept the canals up high before the rains even yeah, got here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill, while we talk about Marvin Bro pumping station, I mean, but uh, just basically, I know we we discussed the last couple of months, and one of the main maintenance issues out there is the rake system. And uh, that in the preliminary proposal for the new pumps, there's a different type of uh, rake system there. 
and that these that we have are a maintenance nightmare. Absolutely. They were obsolete, basically, and in, in the industry, they were right at the end of their time frame whenever we purchased them way back when, and yes. they, it's just getting harder. So I just want to let everybody know that um, that rake system per pump runs about a million dollars, and that's something that we're going to have to be looking towards our maintenance or something. Todd, I'm sure y'all ran into it before, is that we're just going to, it's something we got to put on the burner that, uh, uh, it's, it's quite a job to change from one rake system to the other and get that going. That's but you, you're right, sir, and that's something we've been looking at, but we're going to go ahead and get the additional um, capacity put in with a new rake system, and then we're going to try to get the, the a similar type rake system for each pump so we can uh, keep the same parts uh, for all of them if we can. But that is something we're looking at as funding is available. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Mr. Cullen. Uh, yeah, Bill, the uh, cleanup on uh, New River, as far as the trees and stuff go, how are we looking on that? Yes, sir. The, uh, I talked to NRCS uh, Friday, actually, at a, uh, at a uh, I guess, a, a, a FEMA uh, road show, if, for lack of a better term. Uh, a lot of federal agencies with that, Lamar Dixon, and, and the administration had uh, representatives there. I talked to NRCS, uh, uh, several NRCS people. And CDM is at, on the final stages of completing their um, bid package. It's, it's a compensation, compensation package of how it's going to be bid out, unit prices and things like this. The next step is uh, for us, the administration, to review it. And then it's going to be sent to NRCS to review and make comments. Because everything, anything that uh, happens on this project has to be okay, reviewed and okay by NRCS. So it's going to be sent to them. They're going to go through that review process make corrections or comments, send it back, get the final document, and then we'd be able to bid it out. Unfortunately, uh, just like dealing with uh, any other uh, federal agency, there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Um, and we're trying to proceed as, as quick as possible, but it is a little bit of a unique situation in that some of the debris can going to be removed from the land, some of it can be uh, uh, removed from inside the channel, so there are different rates of compensation that have to be put in there so a bidder can, can bid on it equally with, uh, with other bidders. It's a little bit of a complicated process and different from road debris removal because it just it's, it's, it varies so much. It's unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, several other parishes has done it, though, and we've taken advice from several, several parishes, Tangible Hole and uh, St. Tammany and stuff like this. So um, we are proceeding as quick as possible, though. Good deal. Bill, give us an update on that when y'all get a second there, because, you know, send it out to us. That's just become an issue that uh, New River passed through several of our areas, and uh, it we know how bad it is. Yeah. And That's right. And, and it is. That last little storm we had, you can add a couple more trees to the it. tornado didn't help it out. So. Yeah. And actually, we're getting into a situation where all of the debris has been located, GPS located and mapped. And the l debris is moving on us <laughs> when we get this high water. And, but uh, NRC knows about it, and they're going to work with us with the, uh, the project. But uh, I I'm hoping to have CDM with the draft of the bid package, compensation package, uh, hopefully within the next three or four weeks. So we can uh, and have it in NRCS's hands yeah. so they can have it reviewed. Anything that any one of us can do to help you out with that, get that firm moving forward on that, yes, sir. let us know. Anything else for Mr. Rue? Thank you all. Uh, next item on the agenda was Louisiana Coastal Parish Zone. Um, we have the Louisiana Department of Natural Resources Coastal Protection and Restoration Division. Um, I think we have a speaker, Mr. Uh, Greg Dakota. Yes, sir, Mr. Dakota. Mr. Martinez, if you want to. I just kind of uh, wanted to introduce Mr. Dakota. I've, I've been right. knowing him for several years uh, when I worked at DOTD. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with. Uh, you're going to get what Kent's been wanting. Hopefully we can get in the coastal parishes. Uh, we pretty much made a decision uh, to, to do the entire parish. You don't have to do the entire parish. You could actually pick uh, different areas. and. Uh, but uh, we wanted Mr. Dakota to come over and explain the program. 
and uh, we're going to have him also at our council meeting. But we wanted to have him here at the drainage board and uh, for questions, answers, and uh, hopefully we can, can get this accomplished and start sharing in some of this money. He's already promised us how many million? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he didn't I promise have, us anything I, yet. I, I would have to defer to, to uh, <laughs> Mr. Schutz and uh, Assistant Secretary yeah. Buat for that. Thank um, you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in the audience and gentlemen on the commission. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. I'm very excited about the idea that we could get Ascension Parish um, in the coastal zone or even considering it. Um, that's a very interesting and exciting thing for us. As I said, my name is Greg Decody. I'm the acting administrator for the Interagency Affairs Field Services Division in the Office of Coastal Restoration and Management. I'm going to be real brief. What I want to try to do is just give you a little background on the coastal management and a little background on the state's program, federal and state, how um, you get in the coastal zone and what it may mean to you to the parish and the people in the parish, uh, both good and bad, because there are some things that uh, people want to think about. With respect to the Federal Coastal Zone Management Pla Act, it was passed by Congress in 1972. Congress felt that the, the coastal areas of the United States really were in need of so, some assistance and some funding in order to, to, to look at those programs and look at those areas and do what they could because they recognize the significance and the importance of the coastal zone. It allowed all of the states that border the coast, uh, both the oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, the Gulf, as well as those states that border the Great Lakes to enter into this a voluntary program. What each state had to do was develop a program and pass a state statute saying that they were going to, in fact, be in the program and operate pursuant to the plan that they submitted. Louisiana did that. Um, we, we passed the state act in 1978 and it was called the state and local, state and local coastal resources management act. And it was called that for a reason because mirroring the federal act, the, the states were encouraged to bring local government into the process of coastal management. And so in the federal statute, they encouraged the states to, to make sure that when they wrote their plan, there were provisions for local government to be in, in the program. And in Louisiana, we did. We passed the, st the State and Local Coastal Resources Management Act. It includes 19 coastal parishes, all are part. Uh, there are several that have some small parts in it, but uh, for the most part it was those 19. And I can rattle them off, but uh, you, that's not of any consequence to y'all. And what it does was, w the state said in the act, the parish can present a plan to the state and it would, once it's approved, it would have a part of the local, uh, part of the program. Um, I'll go back to how to get in the coastal zone and the way now, since it is set, the, the only way that we have to allow an area to become part of the coastal zone now would be through state legislation. So if Ascension was interested in becoming uh, the 20th parish, there would have to be state legislation changing the boundary. That I don't think is, um, <clears throat> is any... I mean, I, I would suspect that that, that that is something that if the parish wants it, uh, I would not doubt that the legislature would probably go along with that. Um, and then what we would do is we would change the boundary in our program, submit it to NOAA, and explain to them our um, expansion. And I, I don't see why we would have any problem doing that. Um, Ascension is is close enough and it, it, it border well of course now it borders it but there are large parts of ascension that would be important I think in res with respect to the coastal zone the coastal area the 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 estuarine areas that that are fed by the waters from that that flow through ascension parish so that would ha be how you get in uh, to the to the program the benefits 
Um, there are funding benefits that accrue to parishes that are in the coastal zone that don't accrue to parishes outside of the coastal zone. The Coastal Wetlands Planning Protection and Restoration Act generally, QIPRA we call it, generally doesn't do projects outside of the coastal zone. Um, that's a significant amount of money. There are some incredible projects that are done through that program to enhance the wetlands. Uh, you can be rest assured that you will get a considerable amount of technical assistance. Um, we have very, very robust GIS systems. Uh, we develop data that, that would be useful to the parish. I understand and I know um, that Ascension also has a very robust GIS platform and, and system ongoing. Um, we could, I think, add to that in numerous ways. Um, and you get a bigger and better voice at the coastal restoration table, in, in my opinion. Um, those, those parishes that are actively in the, co that are in the coastal zone and are active obviously reap that benefit. Um, as, you, as you can well imagine, there are, no, there are no parishes on the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority that aren't in the coastal zone. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it is, I think, significant in that respect. With respect to challenges, and I did say there were some, um, while the coastal programs are not mandatory, they are regulatory. There is a regulatory part of that. Um, folks conceivably would have to get what we call coastal use permits. Now, coastal use permits are state permits and some are local permits. Uh, there are things, though, that I think would ameliorate most of the concerns you might have with respect to Ascension Parish. Uh, generally speaking, areas that are above five feet do not require coastal use permits because they generally do not have any impacts on the coastal zone. I suspect, based on my geography of Ascension Parish, is not that great, but I suspect that significant, significantly most of it is not with uh, below five feet. Um, those areas that are probably in the, the southeast quadrant that are the lower areas that, that you're more seeking to actively manage and probably trying to um, not encourage tons of development in in the first place. It's not to say that you couldn't get a permit anyway. Um, and that's probably the, the largest part is the regulatory part. That is the part that seems to bother most folks. But uh, I don't think that it's a hurdle that, that, that is insurmountable. You have, uh, you have the Corps of Engineers issuing Section 404 permits anyway. And our program dovetails with the, them very well. We have joint permit processing system with them. So you, uh, you it's not really any yeah. great. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Why are you speaking on this, yes, you sir. know, the pros and cons? With, as far as uh, homeowner's insurance, I, I was told that if we become a coastal zone, that it's a possibility of the homeowner's insurance going up tremendously. In some areas, now, that might that was just rumor talk on the street, so I right. just wanted to get that cleared up while you were here. I I do not know that that is, that is the case. Especially in no, the lower area, you know. Correct. I have no evidence to, uh, to refute or, or, or support that claim. Um, I don't think that's the case. Okay. I think that, that flood insurance, to my knowledge, is based on strictly on the elevation. Mm -hmm. and whether or not um, how high you build. So just because you're in a coastal zone, that do doesn't have specifically to. with whether or not it is in or out of the <coughs> coastal zone. Appreciate that. Yeah, I guess what Todd's saying is that, you know, if, if you designate it in a coastal zone, I know it's been been uh, backdoor talk about, you know, it's like putting an X on your head, you know, you mark for life, you know, you, you live in the swamp. The, the Which actually, I'm the only one up here that does live in a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand, but that 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 was pretty much the uh, nuts and bolts of of what I wanted yeah. to tell you this evening. I um, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, if you have any other questions regarding the the specifics about coastal management, I'd be happy to try and answer them. I, I guess that at some point we'll have. Uh, we'll be able to see some presentations or something or some type of workshop to where the pros and cons and well, you know what's good about coast being in a coastal zone. Absolutely. I have I have a few copies of a presentation that I give when, when uh, 
a little that are oriented more towards the details of a local coastal program, but they do spell out uh, the aspects of generally being in the coastal zone. Yeah. I can leave those with I would like for you to leave one with uh, the secretary, and you maybe bet. you can scan that and get it out to us. Okay. And I'd be happy to come back anytime and talk to you all about coastal management, because I've worked with, that's been my job since 1987 working with the parishes and to me that's the most fun and the most exciting part of coastal management because y'all are where the uh, erosion meets the water as it were. <laughs> Mr. Jake's not you yeah, something? Uh, how, how much is it now in the uh, Quipper program for uh, for funds that uh, that mostly go toward coastal parishes? I believe Quipper is now funded at a level of about 40 million a year. Yeah. Um, and then there are the other funding mechanisms oh, are sure. the CAP program, the Coastal Impact Assistance Program. There is a community-based coastal, uh, community-based restoration program. Those are, those are targeted specifically to areas in the coastal zone. Hmm. There are other programs that, that are, while not specifically targeted, or, or I should say only targeted to coastal zone, that, that favor coastal areas for mm -hmm. restoration projects. The offshore all royalties? Mm -hmm. That is part of the uh, overall CAP program. Okay. And those monies are going to rise, is my understanding of the CAP program. There was a, uh, what we have gotten now, there have been two, two versions of CAP. The first came through NOAA and the second came through MMS. And the one that is coming through MMS now, as I appreciate it, is a prelude to the, the revenue sharing that is going to kick in at some point in 2013 or, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm not certain about that date, but sometime in that, in that time frame. And, and what are we talking about ballpark in those programs? I am not certain. I think we got about 150 million uh, this go round for okay. through MMS. It, it, it relates to fairly significant funding, and I think that uh, funding down the road, as I appreciate what they've projected it to be, would be fairly sizable. Thank you. And a part of CAP is directly, um, part of the CAP formula provides that a certain percentage of that money di goes directly to the parish. Okay. I think it's 35%. Thank you, sir. You Any other questions? Appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Ticotti. Let's move on to item number eight, status update on the M HMGP projects, Carla Cormier. Hello, gentlemen. I come with some good news. The, you should have in your packet the award letter from the state and from FEMA. The project for the 10, eleva 10 homes being elevated has been approved and that comes in the amount uh, including your subgrantee administration of $865,509,000. $865,509. So I need a motion to accept those funds into the parish and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. So moved. Chair would entertain a motion. Mr. Shake Snyder. I'll second. Second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Any opposition? Any discussion? Motion carries. The second item is to authorize a re-advertisement of the demolition of the acquisition properties. We did not have any bids received today, so we'd like to reauthorize that demolition. I make that uh, motion to. Have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Mr. Chris Lohr. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. The letter C item is the authorization to accept the scope change. We have one homeowner that changed from acquisition to elevation, and FEMA and the state has already approved that. So I need a motion authorizing that that proceed. So we have, Mr. Chair. have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dennis Cullen. I got a quick discussion. Sure. Uh, in the event that the homeowners change, uh, what becomes of that? I mean, well, actually, it did save the project some money. It ch saved about sixty-three thousand dollars. So, it has to go through a whole process. FEMA has to approve it, make sure it's still cost-benefit effective, and the property is going forward with an elevation. It changed from an elderly gentleman, and he passed it on to his his son. Okay. 
So that's what the change, the mind change was. So we still have a resident that's yes. benefiting from, from that program. Absolutely, community. Yes. Thank you. Any opposition? Motion passes. Move on to D. Letter D is to actually rescind a previous authorization on October 6th. You had approved a purchase amount of 152000 for home number one. FEMA has located duplication of benefits, and we want you to authorize an acceptance of 109000 so, so that needs to be done in separate motions. I second. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Shakes and I, a second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Motion carries. You had discussion? Yeah, she and said it's got to be two different motions. Yeah. Okay. We need to two do it parts. in two different motions. Uh, first part of the motion to rescind the offer of October 6th. Yeah. Mr. Shake Snyder. Yes. And second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Any opposition? Motion passes. Move to authorize to accept the offer of 109,000. I second. Yes. We have a motion by Mr. Shake Snyder, second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Motion passes. The last item is to accept a letter that from a homeowner withdrawing from the project. He no longer wants to participate. This is a voluntary program, so the homeowners are under no obligation to continue. So moved, Jim. Motion by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Dennis Cullen. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Cormier. Thank you. We'll move on to item, uh, agenda item number nine, the Commercial Development U.S. 61 Holdings LLC Cooperative Agreement with East Ascension Drainage District. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. I sent out an email um, getting opinion from the commissioners on this. It has to do with the establishment uh, next to CVS Pharmacy in Prairieville. And they wanted permission to cover a, a uh, one of our major uh, drainage ditches coming from that area to... Uh, Airline Highway, and I dictated them what we only what we would consider, and they drafted it into a into a contract, and uh, based on that, I recommend acceptance of the agreement and the motion proposed the authorization to enter, to in, enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement between the EA Consolidated Dra Gravity Drains District Number One and US 61 Holdings LLC, as per the attached contract. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Chris Lohr, second by will be Mr. Todd Lambert. Discussion? Yeah, Mr. Rue, we have legal, this all been through legal. Legal has reviewed it as, as per form. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? Any opposition? Motion passed. Move right into uh, agenda item number 10, annual contract, USGS River Gauge. We ask for authorization to renew the annual contract between USGS and EA Drainage District number one for a cost not to exceed $41,085 per year. This is for the maintenance and upkeep of the gauges along the river. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Valentine. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. We'll move to item number 11, resolution opposing the designation of Bayou Manchac as a historic and scenic river. Yes, sir. Uh, in your uh, packet, you'll see the resolution from Ascension Parish. Also in your packet is a resolution from the Pontchartrain Levy District um, and a letter from Pontchartrain Levy District uh, to the uh, Scenic Rivers Program Coordinator. And do I need to read the resolution or? Yes, uh, let's get a motion on the floor. Uh, to, I would need, a, I would need a, a motion to adopt the resolution and we'll go into discussion. I make that motion, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert. I need a second. Second for discussion. Second by Mr. George Valentine for discussion. Okay, sir. Uh, whereas yeah. the Board of Commissioners of East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drains District Number One was created by the legislature and the commission for providing flood protection on the east bank of the Mississippi River within the parish of Ascension, and whereas Bayou Manshack is a major conduit for drainage and flood waters for a major portion of the parish of Ascension and East Ascension Drains District Number One, and whereas 
The drainage di district has been actively involved in projects to provide improved drainage for the district by dredging and snagging operations within Bayou Manchac and is currently pursuing a project for the Bayou Manchac watershed under Section 211 of the Water Resource Development Act of 1996 and man as managed by the Punch Drain Levy District. And whereas the prohibitions uh, contained in the Historic and Scenic Rivers Program effectively prohibits EA Drainage District and Punch Drain Levy District from executing projects and subs subsequently maintaining those projects deemed necessary to protect the residents of the Bayou Manchac watershed and major flood ev from major flood events. And whereas the board is also concerned about the safety and welfare of the residents using the bayou because the preliminary results of the analysis, analysis conducted as part of the Lake of the Pontchartrain Levy District's ongoing efforts indicate that Bayou Manchac does not meet the criteria for primary contact recreation, secondary contact of recreation and fish and wildlife protection according to the Department of Environmental Quality's criteria and causes uh, and, and the causes of those impairments are fecal chloroform and dissolved oxygen, oxygen normally impacted by discharge of sanitary wastewater. And whereas the board is concerned, the additional permitting requirements represent duplication of process already in place with the Corps of Engineers, LDEQ, LDNR, and others, and may be unnecessarily burden uh, the parish with additional expense and delays. Now, therefore, be it resolved for the reasons cited above, East, East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drain District Number 1 Board of Commissioners are hereby opposed to the, the proposed designation of Bayou Manshack as a historic and scenic river. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Sir. I guess that's for anybody that's listening, it's just basically uh, within the Punch Train Levy District, that we have a, uh, a letter that's attached explaining their, their opposition to that. And, uh, I just feel it's my point of view as a uh, as a drainage commission that's chartered to divert flooding. Uh, we have nothing against the, the environment, but uh, I think under state laws, it would it would stop us from doing any type of management within that that river system, and actually the three parishes that it protects to to get the water out. In discussion, Mr. Lohr. Well, I understand what you're saying about uh, I wouldn't want to adopt anything that prevents us from doing something to improve drainage and uh, prevent flooding. That obviously, and I think Councilman Valentine said the same thing earlier about Alligator Bayou, about uh, needing to, to consider drainage first and foremost. Um, but at the same time, I would like to see uh, Bayou Manchac honored for its history and, uh, and, it, and also um, get it to a point where it can be used for recreation so um, I, I don't know if those two if the way that that designation and forgive me for not doing the research on that but I, if that if there's a way we can't do both where we can't uh, maybe sit and and figure out a way where we can do something as far as um, historical uh, landmark and also doing some uh, some improvements towards recreation, but but allowing us to do what we need to do in in, in major uh, major drainage. So uh, I guess, it, it, Mr. Rue, if you know further about that designation, if you could help me out there. It's a it's a re regulatory designation, and, and uh, if you get if you adopt it, then you have to go under the regulatory uh, hmm. control of that commission. And there's a lot of things uh, going back to the old saying, uh, jumping through hoops. Well, you really gonna have to jump through hoops to get anything done. Uh, you have to leave it. They basically want it left in its natural state. Um, as you can see right now after a storm, we got so much de debris and everything. It still gets into an issue of uh, vegetative life and, and, uh, and fish, <coughs> uh, fisheries that's, that's in the bottom of the canal and what you can dredge and can't dredge because due to, to disturbing that, that ecosystem. Um, there's a lot of issues that really prevent you from doing very much to it. And it's, it's a really, a, it's, it's opposed by almost every parish um, that's, that's around by Manchester, including Irville and, and, and Baton Rouge and other people. It really prohibits your, your, uh, your authority to go in and do basic maintenance of that river. Yes, sir, Mr. Valentine. And uh, Mr. Rue, uh, in the past, 
um, primarily Ascension Parish is really only acted to remove trees, debris from storm related mm -hmm. incidents, mm -hmm. I guess, and uh, something that may be blocking up the drainage part of it, which where back, you know, back water would take place. I don't remember of any in recent history of any dredging situation or anything that we've done to widen the bayou of anything unless it had to do with um, um, something that was prohibited in the flow. Right. Am I correct in that? That's correct, but uh, we are working with uh, Lake Pontchartrain right now, part of their comprehensive project that involves Spanish Lake, involves uh, work on the um, on Bayou Manchac itself to better, uh, I guess, uh, control the flooding situation, uh, especially at Wards Creek, diverting it down the river so it don't go up and there's, so there's a lot of work that's, that they're, they're looking at doing along that river that if it was scenic, uh, designated as a scenic river, would probably prohibit, prohibit the major portion of that project. So it, uh, even, but even in the sagging operations, uh, it's, and I'll give you a, for instance, if uh, on wetlands issue, you go get a wetlands permit. They have all kinds of regulations as far as plant life and, and uh, the soil type, and you, know, you can't disturb the root system, but you can down trees. It's very similar to that when you get into permitting on a scenic river. Is you got every little thing that you have to get a permit for, and you got to determine that you're not disturbing the ecosystem in any way before you can touch it and stuff like this. It's just a regulatory nightmare right, uh, when you're trying to do something on the river. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Shake Snyder. Yeah, I, I think uh, the Blind River is designated as a scenic river. Uh, one of the things uh, about that is they try to discourage too much development on the banks of the river and, and try to keep the river in as much as possible in a natural state. Uh, and, and I think basically that's what people are looking for in the, in the Bayou Manchac uh, 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 basin there. Uh, and and I, I think we can possibly have it kind of both ways, as, as Councilman Law was saying. Uh, we, you know, we, we have a situation where our primary concern is drainage right here, but uh, Bayou Manchac is a beautiful river that, that we want, you know, Bayou that we want to keep maintained. But what some of the things we've already put in place, I think, help us to do that. Uh, we're we're desnagging and 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 clearing uh, areas as we did in Conway from the middle of the canal, and it it keeps uh, as you go down Bayou Conway right now, it still looks in its natural uh, state uh, without the the big dredging and and putting fill up in the sides and everything. And so I think that's that's very important that the the appearance of the of the bayou is going to remain as natural as, as possible as some of the things that we're already doing. And I, I think uh, we can take a look at, through zoning issues, uh, just how much development we want to do and maybe with, uh, with other agencies and everything, take a look at how much you want to reduce the amount of development along the banks of of Bayou Manchac uh, through that issue and get the same results as you would going into a, a scenic uh, designation and we still have the ability to do the, the, the drainage issues that we need to do to protect the people. So uh, I think we can do some of the things through zoning and through our practices as we do uh, improve drainage uh, to, to try to uh, continue the improvements we're, you know, we're being made. So uh, I, I don't want the people to get the wrong impression that if we turn this down that we're going backwards and, and we're going to turn it into uh, you know, a, a Wards Creek where they, they they lined it with concrete. So uh, I think we do have some, you know, important practices in, in place already. So uh, I'd like to see us continue that. Well, part well of I just, uh, just look right now, you know, you talked about Bayou Conway. And uh, uh, right now, I mean, we've got a study that we're, we're asking somebody to support us on right now to take a look that might possibly end up you know the dredging of, of mm -hmm. Conway and you know so I'm just saying based on our charter I don't think that any of us are against <coughs> the natural environment I'd like to leave the swamp alone as much as possible myself yeah Mr. Chairman what we can do also as part of the um, of getting into a coastal zone and Mr. Dakota and I was talking a little bit about this part of a coastal zone you can have uh, a special zoning uh, implemented 
uh, along your, your major, what we call our coastal zone, which is your major tributaries off the Amit River and also the Amit River, designated areas through there as a special zone since it touches the, the coastal air, our coastal area. And you, which would, you can put in restrictions on what, can, what it should look like, what it should stay as, and, uh, and I'll give you another instance is uh, some of your, uh, your storage area, your flood storage areas can designate it as a storage area for flooding. Uh, you know, best, uh, a special zoning designation to reserve those areas for uh, flood protection and coastal protection. And, but again, you can implement zoning as on, on all your coastal zones, uh, special designations to protect that, that environment. Yes, sir, we just had, uh, just had a card brought to me. We have a speaker, Ms. Pamela. My name is Pamela Calluet. I apologize for my nerves. <laughs> And for my lack of organization, I did not plan on speaking tonight. Um, I've been following this, um, res the designation of Bayou Manchac as a, net, as a historic and scenic river for a while now. And there are a couple things that Mr. Rue said that aren't entirely as presented. The first thing was that, well, first of all, let me say, there was a public hearing put on by um, Department of Wildlife and Fisheries on March the 17th to get feedback for how the public felt about this. No one from Ascension Parish government showed up at that meeting to give us any input on, on your feelings or your intentions on opposing it. Um, I'm kind of disappointed in that. Um, I think that Ascension Parish is an, I mean, Bayou Manchac is a beautiful stream, just on its own. It's a beautiful stream. But because of its historical significance in the, the parish and the state and the nation, really, it would be a shame to let it deteriorate just because we need it for drainage. I agree with Mr. Jack Schneider that it is needed for drainage, but there's got to be some sort of compromise you can do. You made the comment, Mr. Rue, that um, you would be severely restricted and it'd make it very costly and um, I don't remember your exact wording, but be very difficult to clear it after things like Gustav. That's not entirely true. Apparently, you do have to go to the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries to get an approval. But it, I've spoken with the with Keith Cassio, who is the administrator of the Natural and Scenic and Historic and Scenic Rivers Program, and apparently, you just need to go to them for an exemption, which is apparently not impossible to get. Uh, it was my impression from what he said, not even really difficult to get if there's a clear need for, like right now, yes, the bayou does need some clearing, but um, it's my impression from Mr. Cassio that that would not be a difficult thing to do at this point. Um, I think that by just ignoring the historic significance of the river, you're making a big mistake there. Just so many opportunities to use that for attracting people to the area. Um, I mean, histor history buffs would be, I think, coming to see it. Um, there's bird watching opportunities, there's fishing opportunities, not right now there's not fishing opportunities, but that water needs to be cleaned up so that there is fishing available. Some people fish in it right now, I wouldn't. Um, there's photographers, canoeists, I mean, it just, the list could go on and on for the people that would be interested in that pretty little stream right in the middle of lots of development, but you can lose yourself in Bayou Manchac right now. It's, it's just beautiful. Um, I guess that's all I've got to say. Just before you oppose this, please think carefully about it. It's a pretty stream. It's a historic stream, and it needs to all the protection it could get. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other discussion? We have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Uh, I'm Jack. 
We have one objection. Mr. Lohr. Noted. No. Do I need to vote? No problem. Thank you, ma'am. Motion passed. Chair would entertain a motion for adjournment. I make that motion. We have Sam. motion by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Chris Lohr. Any opposition? Second. Motion passes.